Well, what's going on, everybody? Curtis Wilkerson with Hogsports.com, coming to you live from Bud Walton Arena, where the Arkansas Razorbacks just wrapped up a much-needed, feel-good 84-65 to Saturday SEC win over the Florida Gators. Whew! Feels a lot better to stand here and talk about some Razorback basketball than it did a week ago. After just an uncharacteristic performance against Mississippi State, Arkansas dropped their second home game of the season. Didn't see that one coming, but it happened. Had a 12-point lead a few days ago down at Texas A&M. Saw that one squandered. Arkansas is on a two-game losing streak, reeling a little bit. Uh, man, they needed a good performance, and, and they really put one forth here uh, on Saturday against the Gators. You know, this was a must-win for the Razorbacks. You go look at, at any of the bracketology projections, you listen to any of the talking heads, and the consensus has been Arkansas needs to win out at home to secure their spot in the NCAA tournament. Three games, three wins, easy enough, right? Well, not necessarily because it's always a war in the SEC. So Arkansas needed a win in any fashion, but the way they got it, boy, you just feel really good about it, the way that they played. You know, some of these losses lately, they haven't been bad losses. They've been quadrant one losses and, you know, and things of that nature against good teams. But it's kind of the way that they've gone down that have left you scratching your head a little bit. It's the exact opposite here after this game against Florida today. You know, if you just take a look at it, right? Points have been hard to come by for this Razorback team the last couple of days. I know they've been playing some, some good defensive teams in, in A&M and Mississippi State, but they haven't been scoring. What did they have? 50, uh, 56 at A&M. They had 64 against Mississippi State. That's not much for a college basketball game. Uh, wow, you know, 84 points in this one today on 57.6% shooting from the field. They were red hot, uh, looked fantastic. 14 of 17 from the free throw line. It's a heck of a lot better than seven of 14 the last time out. So some progress there. Uh, shot selection was much better. Arkansas only attempted 10 three-pointers. They feasted around the rim. Uh, you know, three-point defense for the Razorbacks has been struggling of late. They've let the last two opponents shoot over 50% from three on them. Florida was four of 21 in this game. So another area where you've been struggling, made some progress in this game today. Blowing halftime leads, second half leads. We've talked about it over and over and over where Arkansas has had these cushions in the second half of games and they haven't been able to hold on. Texas A&M the other day is a prime example. Arkansas is up nine at halftime. That lead evaporates by the under 16 media timeout. In fact, they're losing at that point. That's how quickly it can turn on you. Arkansas started slow in this game today, but they went on an 11-0 run late in the first half, built up a 37 to 31 halftime lead, but you were kind of anxious sitting there at halftime, right? You went and got your popcorn, refill of your soda, beer, whatever it might be, and you're wondering, man, how are they gonna come out here after the break? They responded exactly the way you need to at home. A 17 to two run out of the gates with the Razorbacks really flipped the script there and put this thing away. It was on ice at that point. So really a, a great response there by Arkansas. Look, Florida did not have Colin Castle in this game. They're, they're all SEC center, uh, a guy that, that most of what they do on both ends of the floor, it revolves around him. But you know what? Nobody was feeling sorry for the Gators any more than people have been feeling sorry for the Razorbacks without Trevin Brazil, without Nick Smith for a majority of the season. That's just part of it. So, you know, Arkansas had uh, an advantage inside because of that and they and, and they feasted on it they exploited it that's exactly what you need to do so I was impressed by that a 19 point win helps the metrics margin of victory does matter you say a win is a win uh, one point 20 points you take it how you can get it and that's true because the final result does matter but the style points play when it comes to the resume so a 19 point win is going to help Arkansas in the metrics a quadrant two victory for the resume. Arkansas needs all those quad one and, and quad two victories they can get uh, to improve their standing for the tournament picture. L look, this win just checked a lot of boxes for the Razorbacks. They needed some good vibes, right? They needed some positive momentum uh, and they got it. I thought it was really cool to see some of the pro hogs back. It's, you know, it's all-star weekend in the NBA. Uh, so we saw Stanley Amude, who's been up with the Pistons, by the way, that's awesome. We saw Justin Smith. Isaiah Joe, who leads the NBA in three-point percentage, he was in the building. Jalen Williams, who's been playing a big role for the Thunder of late, he was in the building. So you got all these guys in there. They were recognized uh, at one point during a timeout to a loud ovation. But the current Razorbacks put on a show for them. It was awesome. Let's talk about some of these players 
for a minute here. There were some lineup changes for the Razorbacks. You thought that was coming. Muss isn't really a guy that likes to sit and, and continue to do the same thing with his lineups, especially if they're having a losing streak. Um, lost two in a row. Now you're playing a Florida team that plays four guards. So you're thinking, okay, Arkansas might try to match up a little bit differently. Maybe the Twin Towers look isn't quite what they're looking for in this one. And they change it up. Switched out Mikel for Jordan Walsh. And I think the big one that caught everybody's eye was Nick Smith Jr. earned the start ahead of Ricky Council the fourth. Um, look, you know, with Nick, he got the start. He played 32 minutes. He had 10 points. He was 4 of 12 from the field. Uh, but listen, he's showing some signs. He's not there yet. He's not all the way back yet. But he looked confident. He was aggressive. He plays with a pace that the Razorbacks really need. Uh, he was able to get downhill a couple times for three-point plays and transition. You just have to guard Arkansas a little bit different uh, when he's playing. And, and he's just got an edge about him, a, a passion about him. It just changes the complexion of this team. So for me, uh, this was huge for the Razorbacks, independent of any of the numbers that he put up, because there's no substitute for game minutes when it comes to just building that rhythm and continuity on an individual level for Nick, but then being out there with his teammates and getting back in the flow and the rhythm. He got his first taste of an SEC victory today. That's awesome. It was good to see him back, and I think we're only going to see continued improvement out of him and the Razorbacks, hopefully, moving forward. On the flip side, Ricky comes off the bench. I thought he responded to that really well. He's been struggling the last couple of days, uh, last couple of games, especially shooting from the field. He was 6 of 10 in this one, 15 points, 7 rebounds. I thought he played really well. Um, that's what you need, right? You, 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 this team's been struggling to score at times, uh, so you forget that, that you know they could really benefit from some added bench production. You got that from Ricky in this game. I thought he looked good. Maybe you start him the next game. Maybe you continue to bring him off the bench and see if you can ride a hot streak there. Uh, but he showed signs of life after a couple rough games there. Again, positive developments for the Razorbacks. Uh, you know, Anthony Black had a quiet, it was a quiet game for AB. You look up at the end, he finishes with what, uh, 14 points, five rebounds, and, and he really made his impact there. Uh, you've just come to expect that from him, but the story for the Razorbacks, in my opinion, was in the front court in this one. We talked about Castleton being out for Florida. Arkansas had an advantage inside. How are they going to exploit it? Well, they did it to the tune of 52 points in the paint, and that's a collective effort. That's guards getting downhill uh, and getting to the rim aggressively. We talked about the shot selection, only 10 three-point attempts. They didn't make it three in the first half, but they were relentless getting to the rim. Ball movement was better. Cutting was better. And really, they just executed well. Sometimes things get so stagnant with this team offensively. But Must said tonight they ran 17, 18 different sets, and they executed at a high level. And I thought that it really showed. Uh, but the big men, they impressed me. Makai Mitchell picked up his second double-double of the season, 10 points, 10 rebounds. Uh, man, he's got a bag in there. Now, if you throw it into him and let him go to work, he's got some great footwork finishing ability. He stepped into one of those mid-range jumpers and knocked it down. Um, I think that's important. You saw Mikel Mitchell do that as well. Both those guys hit some mid-range jumpers. I think Mikel's is from about the elbow. Mikai's looked like it was maybe 16, 17 feet, but with the spacing issues this team has at times, uh, for those guys to be able to comfortably step in and knock those down, that discourages opposing defenses from just not guarding them out there. They're essentially a non-threat when they're not around the basket. If they're knocking that down, it's going to draw that defense out a little bit. Uh, but Jalen Graham, <laughs> I mean, he went absolutely bonkers. We've seen the offensive eruptions from Graham, but this was wild. 26 points, that's a career high for Jalen Graham. 12 of 15 from the field, that is extremely efficient. We know the footwork. We know the touch around the glass. He showed it all. Um, it just was phenomenal. And again, for an Arkansas team, the last couple games has been struggling to find consistency in terms of just scoring and putting points on the board. For him to do that, that's incredible. I mean, Arkansas scored 56 uh, the last game out. Graham almost scored half of that tonight against the Florida Gators. So it uh, was really, really impressive. And obviously the thing with him is consistency in other areas. Well, he had seven rebounds in this game. That's something that Arkansas has really been, you know, the staff has been pressing them about. Hey, we need you to be more active on the glass. You're a six-nine guy. You're going to be playing that center spot. Seven's a good number for him. I thought he was really active in there. I thought he moved better on the defensive end. Maybe, you know, I don't know if he needs to keep trying to, to do the charge attempts there. They're pretty telegraphed. But look, he had two blocks in this game. I thought he was moving well. He ran the floor hard. Uh, but yeah, I mean, 26 points, seven boards, two blocks. You take that all the time. He put on a clinic and played a little bit of defense, so we'll see that what that looks like for him moving forward. But tonight, it was huge for the Razorbacks. So, deep breaths, right? 
some vibes are restored a little bit maybe we feel a little bit better you don't want to get too high don't want to get too low that's what they always tell me but i think it's okay to feel good about this one tonight the razorbacks have already put it behind them and they're moving on to the next one that's what they have to do because every single game at this juncture of the season is so important the hogs are up to 18 and 9 now in the season back to 500 at 7 and 7 in lead play we talked about the importance of winning out at home they got some big road opportunities alabama and tennessee you want to go and try to pick those guys off absolutely but at the very bare minimum they have to take care of business at home they did that in this game here against florida next up is a short turnaround against a georgia team that's scrappy and capable but one that arkansas should be able to take care of right here inside bud walton arena that's going to be a tuesday night game looking forward to it appreciate you guys like always good weekend so far for the razorbacks we got baseball knocking off texas Last night, the Hoop Hogs pick up a win over Florida today. Got some more baseball the rest of the weekend. Hope you guys enjoy it, and we'll catch you next time.